So why is the Osmo Pocket 3 so good as a travel camera and should you consider bringing it on your next adventure? Well, before I answer that, I wanna go ahead and go over the specs of the Pocket 3 because it is honestly pretty powerful. So the Pocket 3 is capable of recording in 4K 10-bit D-Log-M and D-Log-M is going to be particularly great for people who wanna pull a little bit of extra quality out of the image when they're in post-production. Now it can actually, with the latest update, do all of that up to 120 frames per second. I just have not updated my Osmo Pocket as of recording this video, but I have shot a bunch in 4K 60 and it does look pretty good. And it's doing this on a brand new one inch sensor, which is actually larger than most smartphones like my iPhone, giving you just a little bit extra image quality over just using your phone. Plus it has an incredible two inch rotating touchscreen that's very satisfying and easy to navigate. Okay, cool. So the Pocket 3 has some pretty solid video specs, but why is it particularly good for travel filmmaking and solo content creators? For me, it really comes down to how powerful it is for how portable it is. I mean, it fits almost in any pocket, whether that be on your person or in a backpack. And that makes it so convenient to travel with. I mean, it's in the name. It's a pocket camera. Do you hear that black magic? A pocket camera. It fits in a pocket. Not in a shoebox, but big deal. My iPhone is also a pocket camera, but the Osmo Pocket is not just a camera. It is also a gimbal, which allows you to be just a little bit more creative with the shots you get. And because it's so stable, I can get walking shots like this really easily or add parallax motion to my footage to make it more dynamic. And it really is easy. I don't have to try too hard to get stable footage while I'm walking. So one of the things about the Osmo Pocket 3 is that it does have this really cool feature called face tracking, so no matter what I do or how I rotate the camera, it's going to automatically track my face. And by the way, you're also listening to the natural audio pickups on this thing. So curious how the audio sounds to you guys. It's pretty cool. I don't even have to think about it. I can just kind of rotate around and the Osmo Pocket does all the work. But let's say I want to get a really cool establishing shot of me walking up to this castle and I don't happen to have a really awesome uh, camera operator. Well, I can make the Osmo Pocket 3 act as my camera operator. All I got to do is use the DJI Mimo app and select me using ActiveTrack 6.0. And then I can recompose the shot as I want. Hit record. And now as I move throughout the frame, the Osmo Pocket 3 is actually going to track with me. So I'm going to want much, much more headroom because the castle is really tall. And now if I were getting this shot of me walking up to this castle, looking super epic and getting Malachi a little bit in the frame, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, active track, it's really cool. And I just wanna reiterate how tiny this thing is. Now when I travel with an entire camera setup and if I wanna carry extra lenses or anything else, I usually have to bring a whole backpack or maybe even a Pelican case. But with this, I could potentially replace all of it. Now, don't get me wrong, I completely understand that a lot of people do in fact need all of this stuff because their work just requires a proper camera. But there are also plenty of you out there that could really just get by with this. By the way, forgive my pronunciation, but we are at Neuschwanstein Castle here in Bavaria, Germany. Fun fact, this was built by Ludwig II back in the 1800s, and it was actually the castle that Walt Disney used to base his castle off of in Disneyland, so pretty cool. Believe it or not, I'm talking to someone down there. <laughs> I'm not crazy. <laughs> And of course there is more to this than what I've talked about, like hyperlapse mode, low light mode, or even different photo modes. But I think I got my point more or less across as to why I like this for solo filmmaking and for travel. That said, this is definitely not a perfect camera and I do have some issues with it. Firstly, this thing is kind of dainty. It's not rugged at all. It's definitely not an action camera. And when I don't have it in its case, kind of like I do right now, I'm very careful to not rest it on the gimbal because I just feel like I'm gonna break it. Now, has anything happened to it yet? No, but I've been careful and it is a constant concern for me. And on the note of it being fragile, it's not weather sealed. So if you're in harsher environments, uh, it's just another concern that something could happen to it. Also, the battery is not swappable, which isn't necessarily a problem because the battery life is pretty good at 166 minutes. But if you forget to charge it for whatever reason, uh, well, bummer, you're just gonna have to wait to charge it up before you can use it again. Now, even though this thing is phenomenal for shooting video, I do find it to be weird and just not very fun to shoot photos on. It can shoot photos and that is great, 
but I just, I just don't like it. I prefer the ergonomics of a regular camera. Oh, and another thing that I almost forgot to mention, I find that the zoom range on the Osmo Pocket leaves a little bit to be desired. So it does have a 2x zoom that you can employ and it gets you marginally close to what you're wanting to look at. But if you're doing any sort of far away shots and you wanna zoom in, it's probably not the best tool for the job. But honestly, I do find that the positives far outweigh the negatives when it comes to the Osmo Pocket 3. In fact, I've been using it as a B camera to my main Sony camera, and you can see that in this video right here. Or if you prefer, you can check out my comparison with the Osmo Pocket versus my iPhone 15 Pro. I hope that you all enjoyed this video and this wonderful view, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.